the ones we need to add. I want you to add to the COVID. The Hulls have the COVID. Larry, uh, Matthew and Dixie, so pray for them. Jim. Yes, Tyler has COVID. That's right. Tyler Franklin has COVID. In summer, we didn't put it on there already. Okay, Summer Hammonds has COVID. All right. Yes. She did. Wonderful. Crystal Howe had her baby. It's a baby boy. He was born five pounds and three ounces. So praise the Lord for that. Everything went well. By the way, while I'm thinking about it, uh, Jasmine wants to be announced to you ladies. Please listen. WM will not meet this Thursday. It will meet the next Thursday evening. So we'll get a call out to you. But uh, just so you'll know, if you show up and you're not here, you might be fearful that the rapture had taken place and you got left behind. And we don't want you to get all bent out of shape. So, All right. All right. Anybody else you want to put it on or take off? Yes. On Monday, uh, Linda Jezek donated a kidney to Jessica. Yes. A miracle. They can have that had bad surgery on Wednesday. They were both home by Friday. Really? Linda Jezek on Monday at the bottom uh, donated a kidney to Jessica. Both of them. They, they did the surgery on Wednesday, and they're both home on Friday. Doing good. Jessica's still in a very lot of pain, though. Right. And the kidney so far is working. Amen. That's wonderful. Also, just under that, Grady and Amy. Grady said they had a nap, so they're not exhausted anymore. You can take them off. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes, ma'am. Uh huh. she is. Rhonda, uh, Michael and Rhonda Walling on Monday under long-term illness, that's who we're talking about. Uh, Rhonda's having troubles with her legs, so let's pray for her. All right? Yes, great. Judy Lucas. Judy Lucas. She's better, but she's still in the hospital. Where's she at? Monday. Monday. Judy Lucas <coughs> is doing better. She's down near the bottom of short-term illness. Okay. Doing better, but still needs lots of prayer. All right. What else we got? Yeah, Olga? Ashley and Cody took the COVID test and they both tested negative. Good. Good. Where are they at? COVID. Oh, they're under COVID. And they're tested negative? Yes. Ashley and Colby? Yes. Amen. So we take them off. They're not... They're not COVID patients. Praise the Lord. All right. Yes, Mary. Uh, Jesse. We adding. Add. Okay. Jesse that owns A1 Septic. Uh huh. Has cancer. Oh, Jesse. Jesse Paddock, isn't it? Paddy. Or Petty. P A D D Y. He has COVID cancer. What his daughter says. He's not going to take any treatment. So he's probably. They said looking good. They said three to five years, but he's young. Jesse Patty, he's uh, Jesse's uh, uh, septic. A1 septic, and uh, he's a good friend of the church. He's done things with us and for us, and appreciate it. He has colon cancer. Uh, Melissa, M E L I S S A, Waldrick, W A L D R E P. She went for x-ray today. I think she has pneumonia. Melissa Waldrop has pneumonia, possibly. Yes. And okay. Anybody else? 
Yes, Carmen? Karen Sutton. Adding her? Yes. C S U T T O N. Uh, it's a co worker's mother. She has cancer, stomach cancer, mm -hmm. and is on hospice. Oh. She has stomach, Karen Sutton has stomach cancer and she's on hospice. Her daughter said they're believing in the miracle. Yeah. All right, we pray for Karen and the family. Who else? Yes, ma'am, Mary? Uh, Kirsten Keller. Kirsten? Mm -hmm. Her job. She said it was her job at that family. Keller is looking for a job. All right. Oh. Yes? Uh, my daughter, Amanda, has a cyst in her finger. It's gonna, she's going to a surgeon, and she's already lost one. We don't want to lose two. And she's already lost a finger. We don't want to lose she has a cyst in her finger? A cyst on her finger. Amanda. Yeah. So pray for Amanda. Yeah. All right. Yes, Carmen? Speaking of jobs, I mean, think Rachel is looking for a job. Oh, she is? And I know there's a lot of Sure. Sure. All right. What else? Bobby has a treatment tomorrow. Bobby had Bobby Petrail has a treatment tomorrow, so she's on uh, Thursday. Thursday. Thank you. I didn't see her back there. She may be here. No. She has treatment tomorrow. All right, Olga. Say again. Last Friday, my aunt called my mom to tell my mom that my cousin was killed. Oh, my. Um, we had heard that it was a car rash, but then later on we had found out that his body was found in downtown Houston. Oh, no. Um, they're thinking that he was beaten to death. Oh, no. This is your uh, cousin. cousin, Olga's cousin. And for the... Rogers and the family. How old a fellow was he? Fifty-one. Fifty-one. Did he have family? Wife? Kids? Anything? All right. Let me hang on, you guys. Let me go. Rebecca. Uh, I'm doing much better. Y'all can take me off. You sure? Yes. We'll do that. Where are you at? Tuesday. 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 Thank you. And just keep praying for Gary. All right. Her hewn. Uh -huh. And they lost their And they lost their daughter. Yes. To COVID. I heard you. All right. She what? Only child. Only child. My gosh. I saw. Yeah, well, good. We need some comfort. Yeah. All right, now then. Dee? That was a joke that asked for Okay. Uh, Deborah Rumfield, she's having some difficulties with her knee and her leg. Deborah Rumfield. Rumfield. She's here, isn't she? Yes, sir, but she was afraid she'd miss being at it for Shelby. Oh, okay. She's got trouble with her knees? Yes, sir. She's hurting real bad. She's okay. Where are they at? They're on co under COVID. Okay. Uh, which, say again. Uh, Anita Copeland Myers. Anita Copeland Myers. Yes, sir. Daughter-in-law. Daughter-in-law. And one-year-old grandson have, um, are over the COVID. Over the COVID. Praise the Lord. Great. Yes, sir. Thank you. Great. Okay. Anybody else? We've run the gamut. Yes, Rebecca. Oh, we have a Amen. Yeah. 
Today's Wednesday. We went on Monday. Okay. Wow. And uh, he, uh, doing much better, they went to the doctor, went to see the heart doctor today. Uh, they told him that uh, he, his blockages were less than 70%. Yeah. He does have blockages, but less than 70%. And they're going to treat him with medication. Okay. Tell me again who this is. Kenneth Dixon. Kenneth Dixon, okay. Our Yes. That's a praise. Sounds like we still need to pray for his heart condition. Yes. Yeah. All right, we'll do that. Darling? My sister, Sharon Clayton. Mm hmm. Probably something else in, but all right. So Sharon Clayton, just uh, health issues. Yes. Zayda and Dylan both have COVID. Who? Jamie Bell and her husband have COVID. Hey guys, if it shows up at your door, just don't open the door. Okay? It's the best thing to do. If it's in the driveway, run over it. Yeah, run over it a couple of times. Whatever you have to do. Oh, we can take Sunday night. On COVID, I have another phrase. I forgot about Tabby and her son, Rowdy. Tabby and Rowdy Gooey? Yes, COVID is gone. COVID is gone. Praise. All right, good. All right, is that it? Yes. Who is that? Kostens, Kathy. Oh, Kathy and uh, Kyle are I going to Columbia. Yeah. And it's a new ministry and it's very dangerous over there. And they've just picked up a new uh, strand of COVID. Mm. So we just need to keep them in prayer for the next three okay. weeks. Kyle and Kathy Kostens. And my sister Kathy. They're uh, going to Columbia, so pray for them. And your sister's going too? Pat Dixon, yeah. Nixon, is it Nixon or Dixon? Nixon in it. All of those that are going to the mission trip, okay? We'll do that. All right, yeah, Kyle needs to get back because he's got to fill in for me while I'm gone. He's going to pollute from there. The girls are coming back and then he's going on All right. All right, is that it? All right, we're glad to see all of you tonight. Some of our visitors are back with us again tonight. Praise the Lord. We'd love to see you. That's good. Got a young man visiting with us. Tell me your name again. Devin. Devin. Devin's visiting. Y'all know Hawk? Y'all know, everybody knows Hawk. This is his grandson. Yeah. Little Hawk. Yeah. And he's, he's, he's going to be staying with Hawk for a little while. And so uh, he'll be a fixture around. Hope we'll see him some. I hope so. All right. So if that's it. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, okay? Heavenly Father, tonight we're thankful for the opportunity we have just to come before you and pray for these who have needs. Pray, Father, you'll watch over each and every person that's going through and experiencing these different diseases, Lord, especially this COVID garbage. Lord, we just pray that you might uh, get us past that so we can continue to move on without that fear hanging over our heads. Father, I just uh, I want to pray for Rhonda tonight as she's uh, having struggles with her legs. Pray that you watch over her and Michael as they deal with that. We also want to pray for Judy Lucas that uh, is doing better, but still, Father, is still struggling some. We just pray that you'll be with her and give her healing. We pray for Linda Jezik and uh, just praise you, Father, for how quickly they have been released and are doing well. Pray that little Jessica will continue to do well. Uh, and um, everything will go well with that. Uh, do continue to pray for Gary and his uh, recovery. Uh, thank you, Lord, for the things that uh, he's already been able to accomplish and pray that he'll continue to just get better. We thank you that Rebecca is doing better now, Father, after she's had those stints. 
And we're thankful, Lord, for Crystal's new little baby boy and the, that everything went well and now Father will be going home and she'll have that little boy to love on. We pray for our uh, revival that's coming up, Father, with the fairs. Pray, Father, your watch care over them as they travel. And then, Father, as we begin on Sunday the 26th, Lord, that he'll just begin with a, an awesome service that'll prepare our hearts for the rest of the week. Excite us, Father, for what might be in store for us as we go through that part of the week, Lord. And uh, we know we need it. And we just pray, God, you'll open our hearts and minds to the things that we need in revival. We continue to pray for Bobby Futrail as she goes in tomorrow for another treatment. And uh, just pray, Father, that she finishes up after this one. One more. Lord, I know she's looking forward to that. And uh, we are too. And that she'll finally get past all this sickness and feeling bad, Lord, and be able to function better. Uh, we're thankful, Lord, for those we got to take off our COVID list, Lord, for Tabby and Ro Rowdy, for Nita and uh, Myers and their daughter-in-law and one-year-old grandson, for Ashley and um, Colby. Uh, we're thankful for that. But Lord, then we've had to add the Hulls and Tyler and Summer and Zeta and Dylan and Jamie and her husband. Lord, we just pray for these and uh, that you'll watch over them. Pray that the COVID as it comes, that it'll go away just as quickly as it comes and that there won't be any lingering difficulties, Father, with these who have that. Then, Father, pray for uh, uh, Kenneth Dixon who has, uh, uh, it was a praise, but Father, just want to lift him up because he still has some heart issues and just pray you'll watch over him. And thank you, Lord, for the way you protected him this week. We pray for Debbie Rumsfield, Lord, that you'll watch over her. I know, Father, when you have knee troubles, it's painful. And I just pray, God, you'll give her the strength to uh, get through this. Pray for Jesse as we find out tonight he's got colon cancer. Lord, give him wisdom in how to deal with that and what he should do and be considerate of those around him as well as himself. And just pray for his uh, spiritual life, Father, as well. We also pray for Melissa Waldrop who has possibly uh, has possible pneumonia. Pray that you watch over her and deliver her from that. We also pray for Karen Sutton, who has uh, this stomach cancer and is on hospice. Uh, Lord, we pray that if you're going to take her home, that it will be a time of, of, um, of grace for her and her family. And Lord, if you decide that you want to heal her, then Father, I pray that it will be a place of glory. And then I pray for uh, Kirsten Keller, she needs a job as well as does Rachel. Lord, we just pray for these young ladies that you'll find them that job that will take care of them and they'll be able to work their schedules and be able to do the things that need to be done. And then I pray for Amanda who has the cyst on her finger. Lord, we just pray that you might uh, help the doctors know how best to handle that so that she doesn't lose her finger. And then for the Terhunes, Lord, we pray your comfort over them, the loss of their daughter, and that you just minister to their, their hearts. May Father their... Christian testimony be one that's strong and seen by all that's around them through this difficulty. And then, Lord, we pray for Sharon Clayton as uh, she's got some health issues tonight, Father, as well. Watch over our missionaries, and especially, Father, watch over Kyle and Kathy and Pat, uh, Patricia and, um, for Kathy that's going with them. And I just pray, Father, you bless and watch over them as they go to the mission field. I know how excited they are. Pray that you'll give them safety as they travel and let them be able to get back home to us safely, Father. We pray for our church that we'll continue to see your hand of blessing as we move forward. Thank you, Father, for what you've done and how you've blessed us. Now, Father, I pray as we move forward that we'll continue to just see your hand upon us and that we won't outrun you, but, Father, we wait upon you to give us direction and wisdom in the things that we need to do. Bless our young people tonight. And our children's ministries and all the work that's being done <laughs> with them tonight. Just pray for a great evening for them. And then, Father, bless our time in the Word of God as well. We pray for our country. God, we know that uh, there are biblical things that are happening. You are very much involved in all that's taking place. And we understand, Lord, that from, from our side, it looks uh, confusing. But from your side, Father, it's a divine plan. And we thank you that we can, by faith, trust you. That you're going to work out your plan. May we be consistent in being who we're supposed to be. 
so you can do what you want to do. And then, Father, I pray for uh, our service men and women all over the world, especially, Father, those who are in harm's way. Be with them. Bring them home safely to us, Lord. We love you. We thank you, God, for all that you're doing. Bless now tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Where's he at? He's on Friday. Friday. My grandson, Benjamin, got bit by a dog. It's healing up rather nicely so we could take him off. Okay. Add Nancy to me. She's not got to, uh, COVID, but she's, she is, uh, she's just having, yeah, she's fallen and she's having some difficulty. So please remember Nancy Toomey. Mm-hmm. I, I forgot to say this too. Uh, we have a Operation Christmas Child kickoff at Dorcas on Saturday. Amen. So what time is that? I think it's 10 o'clock, 10 to 1. Okay. I'm thinking. I've got to double check. Okay. Yeah, I did too. Huh? I saw, that on, I saw it on Facebook. Okay. We did. We've added them. Anybody wants to go? Also, have one more opportunity for you. Uh, many of you've been to the uh, the uh, care centers banquet that they have out at the Walker County Fairgrounds. Many of you've been. How many of you've ever been? Okay. Those of you that raised your hand, you know what I'm talking about. We have a table out there. Ruby and I will be gone that Monday night. It's October the 4th. So we have eight places, either four couples or eight people or whatever. And if you would be interested in going, it is a free meal. However, I will tell you that it is a fundraiser. And before you leave, you will be asked to give. So don't go thinking that, oh boy, I get a free meal. This is more about... I can get to help a ministry that really does a great job. And uh, the testimonies and things they share are awesome. Uh, They were previously called the Pregnancy Care Center, and uh, they do a lot of work with the college kids and different ones, and they will prevent abortions by their uh, sonograms. They do sonograms. And they show these little ladies their baby. And many times when they see that baby, they, they'll change their minds. And they do a lot of work with them and uh, helping them and new, new, new uh, uh, parents. And uh, it's a great program. But if you'd be interested in going, I have eight places I need to fill. So uh, it's October the 4th. It's a Monday evening. It's a real nice evening. Go out and... Uh, You'll be around a lot of people, and they'll serve some great food, and you'll just have a great time. Let me, does, do I have anybody that knows you want to go right now? All right, Dwayne? All right, Dwayne's going to go, and uh, Grady and Amy will go. Okay, good. Your mom wants to go? She would want to. Okay. Okay, great. Hey. Okay. Okay, great. All right. Okay, uh, we're going to put this together. So I've got one, two, three, four, five right now. I've got three more places is what I've got. So I think it's eight total. I'll have to check. It's either eight or ten. So I'll check. I haven't got my packet yet. But if you're interested in going, we'd like for you to go. And it'll be a great evening together. Okay? All right, take your Bibles out. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians 13. What do you know about this chapter? It's called the love chapter. It? It's used for marriage ceremonies, all kinds of things. But you need to remember this. What was chapter 12 about? Spiritual gifts. And when he ends chapter 12, he ends with the commendation, seek the best. Seek the best. And what he's referring to is the fact that a spiritual gift can't operate outside of God's love. It just won't, it won't work. And so when he goes into chapter 13, we will talk about love and all that love does, but don't forget this, and I won't let you, it has to do with your spiritual gifts and what God's given you to use as, uh, as 
as you are given opportunity to serve using your spiritual gifts. I want to give you, I'm going to give, this is a, a thing I've done, and I, I want to give this to you before I even get into the chapter. Uh, it has so much good information that I think sets up chapter 13. The simplest description of God is 1 John chapter 4, verse 16. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. Well, that's such a great description of God. Therefore, the simplest and most profound description of a Christian character also is love. That we love. Real love. Not the phony baloney put on love. I'm talking about the real love. The real stuff. In the Corinthian church, they had the spiritual gifts present. They had the right doctrine, for the most part, was present. But love was absent. That's where they got problems. They loved to talk about their spiritual giftedness. And they would brag about, I've got this gift, and you don't have that gift, and you should have my gift, and blah, 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 blah. They understood what spiritual gifts were. They had the doctrine. They had the gifts. But they didn't have any love. And that's where they failed. And that's why Paul is going to spend chapter 13 talking about love. Here in the middle of Paul's teaching on spiritual gifts, he puts this chapter about love. Chapter 12 discusses the receipt or the reception and the interrelationship of the gifts. Chapter 14 presents the proper exercise and purpose of the gifts. But in the middle, we see the proper attitude and the proper motivation and power. The more excellent way, he talks about, of the gifts. Love. The truly spiritual life is the only life in which the gifts of the Spirit can operate. I just love these statements. The truly spiritual life is the only life in which the gifts of the Spirit can operate. You can try to operate in your spiritual gift without being spiritual, but what you're doing is you're operating in the flesh, and that does not honor God. The health of spiritual living is not reflected in spiritual gifts. You don't prove yourself spiritually healthy because you have spiritual gifts, but in spiritual fruit. What's the first fruit of the Spirit? Love. Love, joy, peace. It's Galatians chapter 5. Love, joy, peace. Love is the first fruit of the Spirit. So without the fruit of the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit cannot operate, except in the flesh, becoming a counterfeit and counterproductive. Through the fruit of the Spirit, God gives the motivation and power to minister the gifts of the Spirit. It's through the fruit of the Spirit that these gifts operate effectively. Now understand that the fruit of the Spirit does not make one spiritual. I like this. But it's simply the evidence of one who is spiritual. Spiritual fruit does not make you spiritual. It is an evidence of your spiritual nature. That's important to remember. Some of us try to produce the fruit of the Spirit. You know, we try to show that we're a patient person. But it's not the fruit of the Spirit. We're trying to produce it. It's counterfeit. It has to come from the Holy Spirit of God. Only walking in the Spirit makes the believer spiritual. Only walking in the Spirit. To walk in the Spirit is Paul's definition for a day-to-day -day obedience to the Word of God and submission to the Lord. The Corinthians uh, Christians were not walking in the Spirit. They were selfish, self-willed, self-motivated, doing everything possible to promote themselves, their own interest and their own welfare, doing their own thing for their own good, and calling it spiritual. It just doesn't work that way. When we stray from the source of love, it is impossible to be loving. The further you get away from God, the less loving you're going to become. The, more, the closer you get to God, the more loving you're going to be. Agape, the Greek word that's used in 1 Corinthians 13, where in the King James it's translated uh, charity. charity. The word is agape. Agape is love. It's the word for love. And it is the 
pinnacle of love. It's God's love is what it is. It's not sexual or romantic love. That's eros, Greek word eros. And it's not sentiment or pleasant feelings towards somebody. It's not friend love. That's philia or philia love. It also is not charity, which is associated with giving to the needy. This love is, in fact, different than that because this is where we give because we, have a, we, we, we can't keep from giving. It's not about getting. It's not about... It, it's just about being who we're supposed to be. Agape love that demands something of us, the one offering love, this agape love is more concerned with giving than receiving. The supreme major and example of agape love is God's love. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. What a, what a picture of what this true agape love is all about. He gave His Son. He loved us that much. He gave us His Son. This love is above all else sacrificial. Sacrificing oneself for the sake of others. This love is the willing, <laughs> joyful desire to put the welfare of others above ourselves. Matthew chapter 5, verses 44 through 45 says this, But I say unto you, Jesus says, Love your enemies. Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. He just tells us right there, this is how a true, born again, filled with God's love, Christian is going to react to every kind of situation. It's awesome. Romans 5, 8, but God commended His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's the love that God wants us to have. At the Last Supper, Jesus took off His outer garments, began to wash the disciples' feet as a practical demonstration of love to those who, contrary to the Master, were then thinking only about themselves and how they were going to be promoted in the kingdom. And yet Jesus, the Master, takes off the garment and washes their feet. Love is so much an absolute of the Christian life that Jesus said to his disciples, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another. Even as I've loved you, that you have also loved one another. By this shall all men know you're my disciples, if you love one another. Agape, O oh, love one another. It's not about hugs and kisses. It's about love. Genuine care, genuine concern, genuine um, partnership. It's, it's, it's just genuine love. That's what he's looking for. Everything a Christian does should be done in love. The right theology is no substitute for love. Religious works are no substitute for love. As Christians, we have no excuse for not loving because the love of God has been poured out or spread about in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who, is, who has given it to us. Romans chapter 5, 5. We do not have to manufacture this love. We only have to share this love we've been given. You know, when, God, when the Lord Jesus says this love has been made, it's, 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 um, it's been made to just overflow your heart. God's love in a Christian's life who is totally submitted to God, I don't think can keep from loving. I mean, honestly. Because that Holy Spirit has just filled you full. It's just kind of oozing out of you, you know. You walk past somebody and they sense, what was that? Oh, it's God's love. It's just part of everything you do. It's everything you, you are. It's amazing. We do not have to be humble humanly taught how to love because we ourselves are taught by God to love one another. 1 Thessalonians 4, 9. Now listen to these passages. 1 Corinthians 14, 1. Follow after charity or love. Colossians 3, 14. And above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfectness. 1 Thessalonians 3, 12. And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another and toward all men, even as we do towards you. 2 Corinthians Chapter 8, verse 8. I speak not by commandment, but by the occasion of the forwardness of others, and to prove the sincerity of your love. Philippians 2, 2. Fulfill ye my joy that you be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and one mind. 1 Peter 4, 8. And above all things, have fervent love or charity among yourselves. 
For charity shall cover a multitude of sins. Hebrews 10, 24 says, And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Five keys to loving. Love is commanded. Love is already possessed by Christians. Love is the norm of the Christian living. Love is the work of the Spirit. And love must be practiced to be genuine. Love. Amen? That's important. All right, well, let's look at 1 Corinthians 13 and let's talk about these spiritual gifts and love. Paul begins by saying, Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not charity, I become a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. Basically, he said, If I become the greatest orator in the whole world, where I could speak great swelling words and be bright, bring people together just, just by the sound of my voice and didn't have love, all I'd be is like sounding brass. I'd just be a noisemaker. That's all I'd be. That's what he's saying. Now, let me just share this with you. Some people, they get off in this. We just finished chapter 12 that talked about the gift of tongues. And they think this is the gift of tongues he's talking about. And they, mis they misunderstand. This idea here is to speak with the tongues. The, the people understand the things that God gives and to give that out. And... Uh, the tongues of men, it's the, it's the languages of men. It's not some unknown language. Now, others have taught that there is a heavenly language, and they use this passage to try to prove that, that there's, there's tongues of angels. If you look in Scripture, look all the way through from Genesis to Revelation, you know what? You'll never find an angel saying something somebody didn't understand. They speak in the language of the person they're talking to. There's no such thing as a heavenly language it's God speaks so we understand him angels speak so that as they minister to us God's message we understand them so that has nothing to do with tongues of an unknown nature but he's more talking about the love understand that he's talking about if I could if I could speak if I was the greatest preacher in the world and I didn't have love I wouldn't be worth a flip I'd just be a sounding just a big old I just will be a cannon you know, verse two, and though I have the gift of prophecy, that's the speaking gift and understand all mystery. Let's talk about if I have the gift of to, to speak for God, if I don't have love, it's worthless. If I can discern the, the mysteries of God and man, but no love, it's nothing. He's just giving a list of just awesome things that we could possess but he's basically just telling us you need to understand something the most important thing is to have love I may, verse 12 uh, chapter 12 verse 31 he says I, I, I unto you a more excellent way he says I'm giving you a more excellent way what is it? through love it's got to be in love and all knowledge and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains and have not love charity I'm nothing if I have the gift of faith And, and, and can have the faith that can even move mountains, but I don't have love, it's nothing. It's of no value. Even if I, have, if I were willing to die for my faith without love, it's nothing. He says, verse 3, And though I bestow all my goods and feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not love, it profiteth me nothing, he says. Are you in the picture? Pretty simple, isn't it? I mean, if I have all these ultimate use of all the gifts that God has given, and I don't have love, they're not wrapped in love, it, it just, it's just stuff. That's all it is. It's got to be in love. You know, there's a saying uh, Dr. Maxwell said, and I like it. He says, people don't care what you know until they know how much you care. That's true. In a church, that's true. People want to know you love them. I can preach till the cows come home. I can teach you the Bible, Bible doctrine. I can teach you theology. I can do all of that. But if I don't love on you, if I don't show you my love for you, it's just words. It's just, it's just academics. It's when love is wrapped around it. That's whenever it begins to make sense. Verse uh, 4. Now watch this. He says, Charity suffereth long. This love suffers Long, long suffering. It's patient with people. Self sacrificing. It's non avenging. 
The world calls it weak, but God calls it meek. We'll not retaliate. It suffers long. Somebody hurts your feelings. God's love should let you suffer long. Put it on the back burner. Let it go. Let God have that. Suffer long. Then he says, not only that, it's kind. Kindness is lost in this world today, isn't it? You know, people just... You, you, you find somebody that's kind, it's almost like it's unusual. You almost go, oh, I can't believe they did that. It ought to be natural. For us as Christians, we ought to show kindness to people. To be kind, to be patient. We'll take anything. Kindness will give anything. It's useful, serving, gracious. Matthew 5, 40, 41 says, want your, They want your shirt, give them your coat also. If they ask you to go to a mile, go two miles. Kindness goes the extra mile. Verse 3, it envieth not. Now it's going to give us some things that love is not. It doesn't envy. It doesn't have that nature about it. It doesn't want what others have. It doesn't wish they did not have what they have. But instead... They love the people and what they have. It says, does not envy this world's again. Boy, don't you see, oh, people are wrapped in envy. They envy everything. They envy what somebody else has. They envy the power somebody has. Our, our government is driven by envy. You know that? They want what somebody else doesn't have. They want to take it away from you. They just, you know, it's, a, it's ridiculous. Envy. Then it says, love vaunteth not itself. It doesn't brag. It does not brag. Pride publicized. It doesn't brag. It, it, um, my eyes are not working. The Corinthians was spiritual show-offs. They were spiritual show-offs. Look at me, I'm better than you. Paul says true love doesn't boast, doesn't brag, doesn't vaunt itself. It's not puffed up. It's not arrogant. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't uh, think itself above everybody else. The Corinthians, of course, thought they were perfect. They had all the gifts. They had everything going their way. You know, they were the perfect church. And uh, Paul comes in and exposes them for what they really are. But he says, uh, you don't need to be uh, puffed up. Verse 5, does not behave itself unseemly. Behave unseemly. Poor manners of grace. Inconsiderate of others. Insensitive. Self-righteous rudeness. I've seen this in churches. Uh, you know what? I see it in a lot of churches. I, I, think, I was thinking about one particular church that I saw this in, but I tell you, the more I got to thinking, well, no, wait a minute. They had it too, and they had it too, and do we have it? One church I went to and I visited in the Sunday school class, and they were very um, biblical, they knew the scriptures. I will leave it alone. I will leave it alone. But they, they had this idea that they, because they were so biblical, that anybody that didn't agree with them, they were beneath them. Honestly, they made you feel that way. But you know what? I've been in church. I, I, um, hmm, let's see if I can share this. They are... Uh, Well, thank you. I think every Baptist church has it too. I had somebody tell me, you know, I, I'd love to come to the Baptist church. I see you're joining everything, but I've been divorced and I'm afraid they won't accept me. Where'd they get that idea? I'll tell you where. They got in a Baptist church. They got in the Baptist church. Because somebody said something. 
popped off without any thought. And we can do that with a number of things. The old independent movement I came out of, I tell you, you walk in here with long hair and boy, everybody in the church would go, oh, 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 oh. long haired hippie, that's a rebel. They're not saved. Run! You think I'm kidding, but I'm not. I'm telling you what, it's the truth. They're crazy. I mean, they're crazy, some of them. Yeah. Tattoos. All of those things. You know, you've got to be careful. We're God's people. We love each other. People make mistakes. You love them. If you've never made a mistake, okay, don't love them. You're so perfect. Just go on down the road and find you the perfect church because this isn't it. Amen? And if you join, you just prove that it's not perfect because you're not perfect either, right? I mean, you know what? People are always looking for the perfect church. And I, we just tell, I, I go, where if you're looking for the perfect church, please don't join it because it won't be perfect anymore if you join it. Huh? There wouldn't be anybody there. No, that's right. It wouldn't be anybody there, she said. That's right. But people can get so arrogant. And I think this is what he's talking about. Don't behave yourself unseemly. And then he goes on, seeketh not her own. Seeketh not her own. Let's see if I can find it here. I've got it written on here. Not selfish. Self drives us away from love. Selfishness. When you think of Adam and Eve, the Corinthians thought the spiritual gifts were to be used for self. It's all about self. Adam and Eve, they thought God was trying to hold something back from them. Amen? Now, we can talk about Adam and Eve all you want to, but I'll tell you what, if you sin, that's why you sin. You think God's trying to keep you from something. If you sin, if you sin honestly, if you sin, you think about it. Next time you're, you're put in that position where you catch yourself sinning, stop and ask yourself, why, why would I choose to do this? Because I thought God might have kept something from me that I might enjoy. true selfishness number eight not easily provoked not easily provoked not angered not easily angered one who let's see we are usually angry because of what someone has done to us love is long suffering so you can't be angry with someone because they did something to you because you're long-suffering. Right? right? Exactly. So if you're blowing off the handle all the time, you've got more than one problem. You've got another problem. You, you're not long-suffering. You, you're missing one of the spiritual fruit. Long-suffering. You're missing one of the things that identifies real love of a Christian. Long-suffering. It's an indication of selfishness. You know, when I think about getting angry, I had an anger problem when I was a young man. Oh my gosh. I could get mad over the least little thing. I, I mean, the lawnmower didn't start. Man, I'd take a hammer to it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Dumb. Well, I'll show you. It's real smart, you know. I had a boat motor I was working on one time and I couldn't get the flywheel off. And I got so angry I took a hammer and hit the flywheel. Well, guess what? The flywheel was broken too then, and now I'm going to have to buy a new flywheel just because of anger. But anger is selfishness. I didn't get my way. It's not doing what I wanted to do. Selfishness. Let's go on. Uh, now these are provoked. Thinketh no evil, no retaliation. True agape love does not keep record of offenses. The Lord is in the reconciling business, not in the retaliation business. Amen? Reconcile. Don't retaliate. There's no place in agape love for getting even. Love does not forgive and forget, but rather remembers and still forgives. That's good. That is good. We talked about this this last. We talked about yeah, it is because lots of us we want we 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 hear about well forgive and forget. Let me tell you, you're not going to forget, but you still have to forgive. Amen. 
You got to. That's what God's love is all about. Forgiveness. Continue to forgive. Let's go on. Um, uh, where am I at? Rejoice, uh, rejoiceth not in iniquity. Rejoiceth not in iniquity. They don't justify their sin. To take pleasure in sin. To wish for someone to fail. Gossip is rejoicing in the failure of others. That's gossip. I think gossip's one of the biggest sins around the churches. Amen. Am I right? I mean, honestly. We love to... Did you hear? I want you to pray with me. Did you hear? I have a prayer request. Did you hear? So and so did such and such. We really need to pray for them. You really need to quit gossiping about them. That'd be the best thing. Don't gossip. Um, then notice what it says. They rejoice in the truth. They don't rejoice in iniquity, but instead they rejoice in the truth. Rejoice in the truth. Let me go over here. Rejoice in the truth. Not just factual truth, not just the facts, but godly truth. John 17, 17, Jesus says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy, thy word is truth. John 14, 6, Jesus is truth. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Love cannot tolerate wrong teaching. A parent loves a child, finds that someone is teaching them something wrong. What would that parent do? I know what I would do. I'd clean somebody's plow, amen? I'd do it long-suffering, though, I tell you what. I wouldn't do it in anger. I would do it in righteous indignation. Love rejoices in the things... Those who teach the truth and live by the truth. Then he says, not only does it rejoice the truth, it bears all things. Bears, B-E-A-R-S, bears all things. The word is to cover, to support, to protect. Love protects. Love never protects sin or sinful behavior, but is anxious to protect the sinner. Oh, I need to spend just a minute there. You know, this world has really gone to classing people. And I'm telling you, the church does the same thing. Throw people in a box, you know, they belong in that box, and they belong in that box, and they belong in that box. And they don't really belong here because they're in that box. You know what God says? Love the sinner, hate the sin. Amen? Amen. Love the sinner, hate the sin. That's not hard to do. In fact, you're going to be put in positions where you're forced to do that, and it's going to be interesting to see how you respond to that. When all of a sudden you're standing in front of somebody you know that's living in sin. And God says, love the sinner, hate the sin. How am I supposed to love them when they're living in such sin? Separate the sin out. There's a person here. Somebody that Jesus Christ died for. Somebody that God loves so much. Yeah, and is hurting. And many times they're involved in a sinful behavior simply trying to find some acceptance many times from others. If they would just find it from us. Be careful. Bears all things. Exposing others' sin is driven by our sin nature. But love will seek to protect by not exposing or exploiting, gloating or condemning. Love bears all things. B-E-A-R-S not bears, B-A-R-E-S. It's not about telling everybody about it. It's we carry it. We cover it. We come alongside it. Love will warn, correct, exhort, rebuke, and disciple or dis discipline, but never desire to broadcast. Rejoices in all things, bears all things, believes all things. This is not about being gullible is not suspicious or cynical. Love wants to believe this best of everyone. Love trusts. Love has confidence. They believe. Job's friends showed no love. They wanted to believe the worst about Job. Love wants to trust. 
If trust is broken, love wants to heal and restore. One of the worst things that can happen in a love relationship is for the trust to be broken. It happens all the time. Sometimes on a small scale, sometimes on a huge scale. I read a book one time, it said it takes seven years to rebuild trust after a trust is broken in a marriage relationship. I'm not sure that's true. I don't know that it's ever completely rebuilt. There's always something in the back of your mind that says, what if? Where is he tonight? How come he hadn't called? Where'd she go? She didn't give me a message. Wonder where she's at. Who's she with? It just is there. Boy, we need to guard trust. Amen? Don't ever let it get broken. But true love will want to restore the relationship. Somewhere or another. I've dealt with couples who've been through infidelity. That's a hard thing to overcome. I've watched, though, God put those marriages back together. And they become stronger than some of the more natural marriages. Because they worked through it. And they had to forgive. And they had to trust. You're in a great relationship with somebody that's easy to trust. You don't know what that's like. They have to. And um, they, they to, they want to have that relationship. Believeth all things. Hopeth all things. Love doesn't give up. If everything points to failure, love will continue in hope for change. Not a Pollyanna, pie in the sky, wishing for the best, but an honest, heartfelt, belief that God and His love can make a difference. Hopeth all things and then endureth all things. Love will not stop loving. God's love for us has never stopped. Nothing can get in its way. Nothing can prevent it. God is going to love you. You say, I don't know how God can love me. I've done this. God just does. Period. You ever talk to somebody? Preacher, I... I'd love to get saved, but there's no way God could ever forgive me for this. Oh, well, He's already died for it. He loves you so much. How can you say that? It's already taken care of if you'll just trust Him and believe it. It's taken care of. It never stops. Love bears what's unbearable. Believes what otherwise is unbelievable. Hopes in what seems hopeless and endures when anything else than love we give up. That's the kind of love that we're supposed to have. That's God's love. I, I want to say supposed to have, but it's the kind of love we have because we are in Christ and Christ in us. And the Holy Spirit has flooded us with His love. We have this love. But sometimes we fail to use it. Verse 8 says, Charity never fails. But where there be prophecies, they shall fail. Where there be tongues, they shall cease. Where there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Paul again is pointing to the fact that we put a lot of trust in these things. Tongues, knowledge. You know, these are important things for us to get by with. Wisdom. But he said, they'll fail. But you know what won't fail? God's love won't fail. These three things, and we'll talk about this next week, will come to an end. We won't need them anymore. Interesting. And we'll look at that, how that happens, and why, and when. But there'll come a time when we won't need those. But God's love always be there. You know, I, uh, I've talked about this before, and I think it's uh, just, maybe it fits right here. When you step into heaven, do you know the, the, the greatest thing that's going to happen, I think, is you're going to be overwhelmed with God's love. It's, it's, it's going to be all around you. It's going to be all over you. It's going to be everywhere you look. Every, God's love is just going to be overwhelming. I talk about my wife and I. We have a great relationship. 50 years of marriage. We're in love. You can't say we're not in love. We're lovers. We are, we are lovebirds from way back. I mean, that's who we are. 
And that love relationship is absolutely the deepest kind of love I've ever had for anything or anyone right there, that woman. But when we step into heaven, the love that God will put around us will just encompass us with, bathe us in, will be so grandiose that the love we've had for each other for these 50 years will be, a, be an afterthought. It'll be, it'll be like, oh yeah, yeah there's something special about her, but oh man, look at this. Look at what God's given. Brother Massey lost his wife after 54 years of marriage. And you remember that uh, there for a couple of years we were worried about him. He seemed to go down pretty quick. He'd lost his wife. And she, would, Maggie, was such a vital part to his life. I mean, they just did everything together. She was his fishing partner. She, she just, I mean, anything he did, she did. And they'd back, they loved each other. When he, she passed, he was left alone. Thank goodness God brought um, M Mickey into his life. Mickey stepped in at just the right time. And all of a sudden, we saw this old man who was failing... About, looked like probably if something that happened quick, you know, he was just going to wilt away and die. All of a sudden, he became vibrant, alive. Somebody loved him. Somebody took Maggie's place in a sense. I was at, uh, I was at Brawl's Chapel for a uh, pastor's appreciation. And if you've never been, you, you need to go see this. They... They, they bring them in like king and queen, you know. And Ural and, and um, Mickey, I got Maggie up here. Mickey come in and they bring them down and they set them off to the side and they've got this beautiful setup over here for them and they're just going to spend the, the whole hour just honoring them and everything. And it was really fantastic. And his kids were there. But I noticed something. Kids weren't rejoicing like they had before when Maggie was there. And there was something missing. And so I got up and I told them, I said, I, I, wanna, I need to share something with you. You need to hear this. I said, about two or three years ago, Maggie got the opportunity to go into the arms of a man who loves her more than Ural ever could. And when she took, got the opportunity, she took it. And she left Ural for this other man. His name is Jesus. Amen. And when she stepped into heaven, all the things that she trusted Ural for to provide love for her was completely taken care of. Better than Ural ever could. But the problem is, is Ural was left here. And all the things that she provided for him was gone. And so God said, you know what? I'm going to give him another. Someone who will love him and take care of those needs for him. And so God sent Mickey. And I said, I, I hope you kids understand the love that God has for your dad and Mickey and the love that God has for Maggie. Nobody's been disloyal. Nobody's been unfaithful. This is God's plan. And I believe without a shadow of doubt when we get to heaven it's going to be the most awesome thing in the world. Don't you? I can't wait to see it. I, I, I can't understand how that there's no marriage in heaven. I mean, I, I just can't imagine Ruby and I living in different mansions. I don't understand that. That, just doesn't, that doesn't apply by me. I just don't think that's right. Something's wrong there. From this side. The minute I step into heaven though, it won't matter. No, I won't need that. I won't need her love. I don't need that when I get there. I'll have all of God's love. Oh, man, it's going to be so good. Ah, okay, I've gone over. Let's, let's finish up. Any comment, question, or thought real quick? All right, let's stand and be dismissed with a word of prayer. If you're staying for choir, please come on up and get in your spot so that we can get started. And uh, thank you for being here tonight. I hope it's been a blessing to you as we got started in this. Father, Lord, we thank you for this evening. I pray God... That you'll bless the things we've listened to, the things we've heard. To understand, God, you've already filled us with your love. That's who you are. And we 
are in you. And so we have that love. We have all of this that Paul is describing. And yet, Father, sometimes it feels like we hold it back. We fail to let it flow out of us. So, Father, tonight as we leave, might we consider there's some folks out here that really need some loving. Not our loving. They need your loving. They need to know how much you care for them, how much you love them. And we understand we are your ambassadors. May we be true ambassadors of your love. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you.